So the main uh, tough things for me from an optical perspective was it needed to have five lasers, 30 detectors, and be not really in any way motorized or automated, just we call that fixed alignment so that um, it is aligned once and then day in, day out, the instrument goes, just turns on and keeps working the same way. The main idea we had was to make everything as small as possible. We were lucky enough um, to be able to work with Coherent and they had these very small modules very new uh, platform for their lasers. And so they also were willing to put uh, the lasers onto a particular base plate and uh, set up the rest of the optics for us so that this entire laser is the system we're working with. Um, from here, from the front of this module to the cells is pretty much just flat optics that are doing a tiny amount of steering um, fixed once and then uh, locked in forever. So that, we did luckily have the planet to line <laughs> in several ways um, to be able to get to the, the small factor. And by being small, then all the path lengths are shorter. And therefore, if there is a tiny amount of angular drift, it's less to see at the, the flow cell. The five lasers are fitting all within the, the footprint of this upper plate. And it is just, every angle is tuned to just get maximum density up here and separation and to try not to have too many things uh, coupled together so that if simply one laser needs to be adjusted, you are just adjusting that one laser. And that just makes it more of an ease of use, um, quicker to assemble, quicker to service, and that kind of thing. So yeah, the top is pretty impressive. I think the other interesting part is, um, so all the lasers are pointing at the single uh, flow cell, which is kind of in the middle of this platform, and those cells are injected from down in the loader area up through the flow cell and then end up uh, going back down out of the, the system uh, to go into the waste tank. So the, the way in which we put the detectors down into this area is to first get the light directed there. So there are five fibers, optical fibers shown here, and each one is assigned to a particular laser on the top plate. And so in the same way that the sample kind of comes into the optics plate and then uh, exits from the optics plate, the, the actual detected light, the, the light from the sample, the fluorescent light, is actually ejected from the optics plate down into the detection area through these fibers. So each fiber is dedicated to a single laser and then each uh, fiber is uh, brought to a what we call a detection bank and has a set of filters where the light is broken into the various wavelength buckets and then detected finally by the PMTs. You can have two forward scatters and uh, that is incredibly useful. So many customers uh, use these systems to look at uh, large particles such as blood and they also look for smaller particles and constituents of blood. So the um, besides just the white blood cells and things. So uh, by having two detectors up here, it allows the customer to have just a larger range of things that they're looking at for the, in the forward scatter direction. Uh, the, you can change the wavelength of that second detector from being the, the first detector would always be on the 488 again, like side scatter is. But the second detector can be an additional 488 detector that could be tuned uh, to be looking at the smaller particles, or it can be a shorter wavelength or even a longer wavelength, depending on what the customer wants to see. One of the things we really were challenged with on this system was to be sure that the system is manufactured correctly. And again, day to day, it performs the same way. When we realized we were gonna give users the ability to change filters in detection, um, then we also needed to have the ability 
for the system to know that those filters had been changed and to instruct uh, the software to know what those filters were and also to instruct future users to change it back if needed to the new configure or to the, the original configuration. So that was done um, by the invention of something we call the ZE5i. And it sits up here in the excitation area, but it is used primarily to just create a signature for the LED spectrum uh, uh, for all of the detectors that are down here. So every wavelength that is detected in the detection area is represented by one or more LEDs on the ZE5i. And it is simply a, a, a process and an algorithm to run through each one of those LEDs, look at where they appear on, the, on the, all of the detectors down here to know what the current configuration is and if the configuration day-to-day -day has changed.